And um, today I want to talk about the breakdown analysis in project control using Power BI. All right, I have talked about it on few occasions, but today I want to talk more about it in details. If you have just joined us, you can introduce yourself in the comments section. Tell us what you do and where you are from so others can know about you as well. And if you have any question, um, you can type it in the comments. And after I finish my tutorial, I'm going to go over all questions and answer them one by one. All right. Uh, so we will talk about breakdown analysis. Um, we will talk about the variety and what we can do using Power BI because it's an amazing tool and it can offer a lot of benefits. Salman joined us. Hi, Salman, a planner from Saudi. Hi, Nashat, PM from the UAE. Hi, Raj. Project Control Manager from India. Hi, Muazzam from UAE. We have Francis as well. Hi, Francis. QS from Ghana. We have Prashan, Planning Engineer from Oman. Hi, Elizabeth from the US, a PM. We have also Imran from the UAE. Hi, Ram from Bahrain. Hi, Imran from the UAE. Hi, Ahmed, it's good to have you. Alexandria from the UEE, a planning engineer. Okay, and we have also Suhail, a planning engineer from India. We have uh, Thangaraj from India as well. Hi, Binod. Gaurav, um, PMC from India. Sajid, quality manager. Hi, Uzair from Pakistan. We have also Ravi from India, um, Canada, India. We have the US, Pakistan, Saudi. Um, yeah, we have, you know, it's amazing how we can all connect at the same time. It's very impressive that we can reach so many people across the globe at the same time. Helmi, QS from Saudi. Hi, Vipul from India. Sina, Iran. Interesting. Tahazin from Sri Lanka. Okay, so um, thank you all for coming and joining me this evening. I'm going to do a quick tutorial about the breakdown analysis and the associated applications inside Power BI. And before I start, if you have just joined us, you can introduce yourself in the comments section. Tell us what you do and where you are from so others can know about you as well. Second, um, you can, um, if you have any questions, you can type them in the comments section and I'm gonna go over all questions at the end of my tutorial. We have people from Morocco as well, um, Kenya, Canada, Philippines, Zambia. Okay. This is my breakdown analysis. I choose one parameter, which is cost variance. How much money I am falling behind in my project. The variance figure itself is only the beginning. You know, you need more information to work with, you know, in order to perform effective project control, which is what we want to achieve, right? And I, I choose some indicators to list on the top. Okay. So this is my cost variance breakdown. 
So what does this chart tell us? It will sort the contributors of cost variance from highest to lowest. Okay. Moreover, the area of each element is based on the relative strength of the value. So for example, a slab reinforced concrete. It ranks first. You know, it's the highest performing or the first contributor. So it ranks first here. Okay. And let's assume that it accounts for 30% of the overall cost variance in the project. Then the area will account for 30% of the whole table, right? So it's all based on the relative strength of the value, which is very, very impressive because it is done automatically. You can do it with a click of a button. If you want to do the same inside Excel or in other tool, I'm not sure it can be done. And if so, it's uh, it's how long you will take to perform an analysis like that. Because if you have if you have been following me for a while right now, the challenge in project control is not the lack of experience or ambition or uh, knowledge or skills of planning engineers. It's a lack of time. You can basically do whatever you want. You know, if I give you a task, I am sure one way or another, you're going to do it. But the question is how long you will take, you know, because we all have limited time in a day. You have limited few hours. You have limited energy as well, because it is one factor that is overlooked, right? We are humans. So, um, you know, uh, our energy is drained, you know, so we cannot perform at our best throughout the week, right? At, you know, at the same level. So it is something to keep in mind. That's why we need leverage. Humans are amazing. The human brain is really impressive and we, we can use it to design a dashboard like that, right? We can use and convert our knowledge um, to achieve, you know, amazing results, but also the processing speed is very, very limited, right? That's why we need leverage. A tool like Power BI can do something like that for us. And I'm going to go back about it at the end. Let's gain some insights. I can go to the data date menu. With one click, I will see the corresponding breakdown analysis on any data date of my choice. With a click of a button, I did not import the XER file. I did not browse multiple PDF reports to find the information that I need. I did not use 10 different Excel sheets, right? I did not have to deal with formulas errors. This way, I increase efficiency, speed, reduce friction, increase accuracy. But I am not talking about the garbage in, garbage out you know, type of accuracy. Because if you feed the model with inaccurate data, you're going to get inaccurate data. But I am talking about the sense of uh, you know, accurate configurations, calculations, the processing. This is my point. Let's again some insights. Do you see the cost variance breakdown here on this data date? Slab reinforced concrete ranks first. Okay. And if you are like 99% of planning engineers, you're going to accept this fact and you're going to say, well, you know, this is the way it is. We have to deal with it, or maybe we have to push hard, and that's it but it is not effective project control. I like dealing with facts, with quantitative analysis. I don't uh, leave anything, you know, for a chance. I want to, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, everything boils down in project control uh, to identifying the root cause of the delay and what you should do about it and to try to do that as quickly and efficiently as possible. That's the project control in a nutshell. If you hover over this activity, because this is what I'm going to do, you know, it's my approach. Project, project control is not universal. And I think this is the beauty of it, right? 
uh, like there is no universal framework that you have to follow and the certain mathematical operations that you have to apply everyone is flexible okay because if you really learn how to improve efficiency and uh, create your own systems you're gonna really outperform your colleagues and you're gonna stand out from the crowd right because you have this unique system which you uh, did a good a good job you know designing it uh, after you accumulated years of experience and the quality of experience as well but you know that's another live for another day if i hover over this activity i'm gonna see additional information that will help me in my analysis what is the exact figure of cost variance it makes sense i want to look at it first because i'm doing the cost variance breakdown so i want to see how much exactly I am falling behind in that activity. Plan the cost, exactly the earned value cost, plan the percentage, actual percentage. But let's look at the last field, which is really interesting. This week, actual percentage. The work accomplished over the past week alone, 0%. So it is a critical activity. It's one of the top five, but I did not do any progress. But I want to really collect more facts. Two, year, uh, two weeks earlier, this is the same activity. It ranks fourth. Okay, And if you look at the final field, I have accomplished some work. So what does it tell us here? It tells us that I did not do any progress in a slab reinforced concrete, although it is one of the top five. As a result, the delays accumulated and compounded enough to promote that activity from fourth to first in two weeks a period. How many planning engineers do you know who can perform an analysis like that? And imagine yourself, like it's not only about doing it for yourself because you can do that. Of course, you can uh, prepare your own analysis and uh, provide insights for key decision makers. But it is also about how you show off your work. You know, uh, if you are in a meeting with all key decision makers around you and you perform a you know, an interactive analysis like that, you know, it's um, quite impressive, right? And it shows your skills. Because literally, because you have this tool as a leverage, you can answer almost any question on the spot in the meeting itself, you know, because in many cases, someone will ask you to, you know, so what is the cost of breakdown, cost of variance breakdown like two weeks ago? You know, in many cases, you will tell them, you, you will write it down, you will tell them, I'm going to come back to you, you know, by end of today, right? Because that's the way it is supposed to be. That's how we are programmed. If you really account for that, for so many questions that you have been asked, you know, it's not really effective to complete a project um, on time and within budget, right? Because there are so many details, you know, in construction, um, right? Construction is multi-billion dollars industry. It affects, you know, a whole economy, right? So if you're gonna perform a traditional manual analysis for everything that you want or you asked to do this way, you know, we should not be surprised why we struggle in our projects and why we complete most of our projects beyond the completion date and also over budget right because you need you you need to be uh, more efficient right simple in your analysis but sophisticated in the background so th this is one insight you can also click on the activity and the indicators will be updated as per my selection. This is only a demo. You can add whatever you want here. You can add 
bulge the total cost. You can add earned value labor units. You can add any type of indicators. And it takes few seconds to do so. Why? Because it's a complete model. The problem, you know, with uh, project control in modern world, you know, which is it's something, you know, I have been talking about like forever. Um, you know, uh, planning engineers are conditioned from day one after they finish college and they start their careers that they have to focus on progress report preparation, right? They have to spend the time to prepare progress reports, but, you know, with a tool like Power BI, it's automatically done, you know, it's completed on autopilot. The second uh, problem in project control is we have many modules that are independent, all right? We have the baseline schedule. We always talk about baseline schedule only, you know, like I'm going to ask you refer to the baseline, right? Or a schedule update on a specific data date, right? Or the activity codes, right? or um, like a cost variance uh, or um, resources, right? Like whatever it might be. But uh, we need one model, you know, uh, we need to shift our mindset from the working with independent modules to a comprehensive model. So in my model, everything will talk to each other. Like I don't have independent modules, you know, that this line is talking to all schedule updates to the um, you know resources to activity codes like it's one model and that's the way you should look at it right because nobody has you know the luxury of time to import uh, an xer file every time they want to do an analysis you know you will take forever you will not do your job properly right and if i look at the earned value versus remaining cost for that activity. That's for the overall overall project. But if you look at the highlighted area, it's basically how much this activity accounts from the total, which is really amazing as well. You can see that. <clears throat> okay. And you can do the cost variance breakdown um, you know, on any data date of your choice. And, uh, let me take some of the questions. Okay, from Nizar. How do I get this program? It's a Microsoft Power BI. And, you know, I, I just want to highlight something quickly, right? Because many people reach out to me, they say, you know, I'm doing well with Excel, I'm real advanced user, I do whatever I want. But I don't believe that. Why? Because Excel will never supersede Power BI. Both Power BI and Excel are Microsoft products. So if Excel is enough with all features that, you know, in that include uh, maybe like macros, power pivot, pivot tables, and all of that. If it's enough, why would Microsoft develop Power BI? You know, we don't, you cannot manage huge projects worth millions of dollars with Excel. You know, you cannot, it just it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, other industries, hospitality, finance, they have their own sophisticated softwares and the tools, right? Um, because, you know, if Excel is enough, they will use Excel, but they don't because you need robust data analytics processor. So you can search Google Microsoft Power BI desktop because the one we are using is desktop. From Raj, yes, I can send you the report link. <laughs> mm. 
نيتش هاو ذس كان بي انتجريتد اتس ا جود كويستشن You know, because there is no native integration between Promovera and Power BI, right? There is a native integration between Promovera and Excel. That's how you import and export back and forth between Promovera and Excel. So for integration, you can use a third-party application like Excel, which has a native integration with both Promovera and Power BI. The second option is ODBC. open database connectivity. You will not connect to Promovera, you will connect to the database, which is very, very different, quite sophisticated as well. Hmm. From Sohil, how to set data date that I can filter date and get auto update my dashboard on the same date. You know, I don't know if you are using Power BI or not, but it all comes to um, data analytics, right? Because if I tell you, prepare a query that has data date, you know, as a primary key, for example, you will not understand what I mean, you know? So the answer will be really more complicated than that because I have to explain data analytics, you know, as well. Uh, But basically, you want to find a way to, to have your own query about the schedule updates. You can have one query or you can have a folder, for example. Some people do that. I, I was doing that, but I, I, I do not use this method anymore. I was connecting to a folder. So I will uh, you know, export the schedule update in Excel into one folder. Then it's going to be automatically refreshed, right? Bottom line is the last thing you want to do is to increase friction in the model, which means you, you want to find a way to reduce the number of steps from A to Z. And what is A to Z in our case as a planning engineer from completing your schedule update in the software, Promovera or Microsoft project or whatever it might be, to having your progress report completed. You know, that's my A to Z, right? So you want to reduce the number of steps, you know, because when you have more steps and the more work in between, you increase friction in the model. In my experience, this is not a good practice, right? Because if you have, uh, you know, something goes wrong and it might, you know, uh, happen, especially if you are a beginner, uh, it's quite uh, frustrating. to deal with the problem. Mm. Mm. Hi, Huram. All weekly updates, XCRs, including the baselines, need to be uploaded in Power BI. If it's correct, please shed light on difficulties of merging XCR files with Power BI by beginners. I I have I I kind of answered this question. You cannot connect to Promovera. You can connect to the database or Excel. From Venki, how do I generate the backup data? And as I mentioned, it's all data analytics. Um, but uh, to give you something to start with, you know, maybe you can do your own, you know, homework and find a way to do so. Um, so first, I will assume that you have decent data analytics knowledge. I I do not expect you to be an expert because data analytics is a, sp a specialization area. where many people pursue a whole career in, okay? We do not want to be experts. We want to have decent knowledge, data normalization, primary and the foreign keys, snowflake schemas, uh, cardinality, cross-filter cross direction, etc. okay? So, and to find a way to, uh, we and let's look at it, you know, I'm thinking with you right now, what do we have in project control? Bizline, so we want to have a Bizline module or query inside Power BI. I want to have a query for schedule updates. Um, you can use a folder if that's what you want. And a query for activity codes. 
a query for resources, but for each query you want, it's really, really important to define the primary and the foreign keys properly, because if you don't do so, and by the way, what I showed you right now, for a, think about it for a moment. What I showed you right now, how do you know that it is accurate? And again, I'm not talking about garbage in, garbage out in the model. I am talking about accuracy in terms of configurations. How do you know? Like you see interactive analysis, but how do you know that it is processed accurately? Using Power BI doesn't mean that you will achieve, you know, you will get your configuration right. Okay. So uh, you must uh, define the parameters uh, effectively because otherwise it will not help you achieve the desired outcome. We have a question, but I have already answered that. The sources and the types of integration. From Tasawar, how can we use Power BI on multiple computers and the link with one derived link? All right, that, that's a good question, okay. Uh, so for Excel, if you wanna keep the source accessible to everyone, you can put it on the server, okay. If you want a collaboration among different team members, like I'm gonna assume that every member uh, wanna edit it, you know, wanna access and edit at the same time. Although I have some, you know, uh, concerns with that, uh, like practicality concerns, you know. Uh, so uh, you can upgrade Power BI to Pro, which will cost around ten dollars per month per user. But I don't think it is really essential in project control. I have done well with the free version. You can share the file with other team members, but it's gonna be view only, or or that's maybe there is work around. Uh, you know, the, the report that you create is stored under your Microsoft account, you know, the account that you use when you sign in. So maybe you want to have uh, one, you know, um, like, um, like um, you know, a cred a cred create credentials, you know, uh, for everyone to use, you know, and that's how you can, you know, maybe bypass that. From Heikel, Power BI is based on database like Access or SQL database. Uh, yeah, it is based on database, of course. You need database, and there are so many databases types. You know, like it's really the the offer a lot of variety. Uh, you can check if there is something you want to use, like Access, for example. But I'm talking about project control. You know, what is applicable? Because you can use, you can find a way to use Access. Good for you. Uh, I'm not against that. But access is not often used, f you know, by planning engineers. That's my point. So I want to really be practical here. You know, I want to find a tool that I often use, you know, so you can connect it to the SQL database using ODBC or Excel. Um, okay, we have uh, Amy. Thank you very much. This is a good question. And I want to answer why. How to add columns of cumulative value of man manpower? Um, try to extract the cumulative from Promovera right away. Remember, everything you want as an input is already there in Promovera. You only need to process the information inside Power BI. Power BI is the facade. It's the processor, right? 
so um, uh, some people, uh, I, I don't know where it came from, but some people use DAX formulas to create the cumulative, right? So they want to apply DAX formula, don't do it, you know, <laughs> it's going to be wrong, you know, at least for project control, you know, I'm talking about, you know, uh, from my background as a planning engineer, right? So uh, don't use the DAX formula because it will not produce the desired outcome. Get the cumulative from Promavera right away or get it from the software you are, you are using. I have just saved you a lot of headache. Hi, Alexandria. How we import the updates? Yes. So I wanna, uh, I wanna get or I wanna capture certain information because I don't want everything. And that's you know a good question because some people might think like that. So I'm gonna go to the schedule updates and I'm gonna capture all information that I find useful, like total cost, for example. Or, or but try not to duplicate the fields. So for example. If you, you captured the total cost in the baseline module, don't capture it again in the update query. This is very important because the data will be duplicated. It will not get the right results. So I want to get unique information in the schedule update module. Percentage complete, for example, uh, planned percentage, maybe earned value, you know, something unique to the schedule update module, actual start, uh, okay, etc. From Suhail, a follow up, I use the DAX to add column, but it is not working. So what is the error you, you see, you know, but even if you did not find an, any error, just to don't use the DAX for cumulative. You know, I know many people in the sphere, they are talking about it as if it is the, you know, the only thing that you should do, but unfortunately, you know, it will not get you the results that you need. Okay, so no more questions. Uh, by the way, we have uh, another live the day after tomorrow we will talk delay analysis okay we will talk about the mip 3.3 the dynamic as is contemporaneous period analysis we will also talk about the mip the 3.4 uh, split bifurcated uh, period analysis right so we will talk about both methods in depth we will talk about how to perform the analysis and what the advantages, disadvantages, uses, and the limitations of each method. So don't miss it out. You can attend the live so you can ask questions. Okay. And thank you again for um, you know joining me in this evening. And I hope that you know the tutorial was helpful to you. You don't have to use Power BI, but I'm gonna. I wanted to explain the concept of breakdown analysis because I want to see where the problem is coming from so I can deal with it in a better way, uh, right? So maybe Power BI can generate interactive analysis and immediate results, which is what I need. You can use Excel if you want, but you have to have breakdown analysis. So that's the whole purpose. You can use any other data analytics processor if you want. Um, this was the, um, we have a, a one final question before I leave. Can you explain TIA? Maybe we can have it in another workshop. I know there is a high demand on delay analysis. I did not expect that over the past few lives. I got many questions about delay analysis and I did not want to really you know, have a PowerPoint and uh, explain everything off, you know, bullet points. I do not want that. I, you know, I'm a practical guy. 
So I wanted to really have a comprehensive training about different methods. And after we finish the methods, we will talk about other concepts like delay versus disruption, for example. We will talk about claims as well, you know, because we really need this knowledge. I really want to share it to the world because we can uh, manage our projects in a better way. It will give you an edge, for example, you know, as well, because it's a very essential uh, when you are looking for a better career opportunity, you will get asked many questions about delay analysis because this is very important topic, and uh, we have uh, we do not have many uh, expert practitioners in this sphere. So hopefully, I'm gonna share you know what I know to the world, you know, and hopefully, yeah, it will help someone out there. Okay, thank you much. Thank you very much again for uh, joining and good night.